Thank you for joining us today on Edfile. Welcome to the program. I'm Ayola Kasim. Shoppers worldwide are using approximately 500 billion single-use plastic bags per year. This translates to about a million bags every minute across the globe, or 150 bags a year for every person on Earth, and the number is rising. The effect of all these wastes on our lives and waterways is our focus today on the program. Do stay with us. For more than 50 years, global production of plastic has continued to rise. Some 299 million tons of plastics were produced in 2013, representing a 4% increase over 2012. Recovery and recycling, however, remain insufficient and millions of tons of plastics end up in landfills and oceans each year. A study tagged marine plastic debris and microplastics, global lessons and research to inspire action and guide policy change found that in 2014, Global plastic production exceeded 311 million metric tons, a 4% increase over 2013. Between 4.8 and 12.7 million tons ended up in the ocean as a result of inadequate solid waste management. Microplastics are of particular concern. Uh, yes, it's becoming a huge threat to the world, uh, pollution of the waters, uh, particularly the marine environment from plastics and marine litter. One study estimated that, on average, every square kilometer of the world's oceans has 63,328 microplastics particles floating at the surface. Marine organisms can be exposed to microplastics through direct ingestion of water and indirectly as predators in food webs. This plastic debris results in an estimated $13 billion a year and losses from damage to marine ecosystems, including financial losses to fisheries and tourism, as well as time spent cleaning beaches. Animals such as seabirds, whales and dolphins can become entangled in plastic matter, and floating plastic items such as discarded nets, docks and boats can transport microbes, algae, invertebrates and fish into non-native regions, affecting the local ecosystems. The oceans are so vast and deep that until fairly recently, it was widely assumed that no matter how much trash and chemicals humans dumped into them, the effect would be negligible. Proponents of dumping in the oceans even had a catchphrase, the solution to pollution is dilution. There is evidence that the oceans have suffered at the hands of mankind for millennia, but recent studies show that degradation particularly of shoreline areas, has accelerated dramatically in the past three centuries as industrial discharge and runoff from farms and coastal cities has increased. Many marine pollutants are released into the environment far upstream from coastlines. Nitrogen-rich fertilizers applied by farmers inland, for example, end up in the local streams, rivers, and groundwater and are eventually deposited in estuaries, bays, and deltas. These excess nutrients can spawn massive blooms of algae that rob the water of oxygen, leaving areas where little or no marine life can exist. Scientists have counted some 400 such dead zones around the world. The effect of marine pollution to coastal resources are extensive, impacting on the flora, fauna and entire ecology of the coastal environment. In most cases, apart from direct impact on the living resources, marine pollutants tend to adversely alter or degrade the environment to extreme conditions that are beyond the tolerance or adaptation limits of the living resources therein. Rampart discharge of hot effluent, untreated sewage, oil spills, plastics and other forms of debris into our coastal aquatic environment is quite common off the coast of Lagos and major industrialized cities of the Niger Delta region of Nigeria, such as Wari and Port Harcourt. The world suddenly, as part of development, had had to get to use plastic material as packaging for several different things, for water, for food, for everyday living. The net effect of this plastic material is the fact that they are not degradable, that is, they cannot disappear. You can't do anything about them. 
which is one of the advantages why we started using them in the first instance. But it has now turned out to be a big problem. Now, these plastics are used in our different homes. They're supposed to be packaged and sent to a proper landfill. But in most developing countries, this is not the case. Instead, these plastics and uh, plastic material end up in uh, our canals and our streams and our rivers. Now, these plastics then move from these canals and these streams into bigger water bodies, the rivers. The rivers empty into a lagoon, as in the case of Lagos. And this lagoon then ends up in the ocean. So the Atlantic Ocean and what we call the uh, Gulf of Guinea right now is overloaded with these plastic materials. Go into any municipality, any area of our country now. Our gutters, our canals, our streams, you will find huge tons of plastics and plastic type material in the gutters. Where are they coming from? They are coming from municipal waste. Our municipal waste is poorly managed, which is another issue, another problem. The fact that we do not handle municipal waste properly, municipal solid waste. This solid, so a lot of people use the uh, rivers as their empty ground for this uh, municipal waste. And from studies we have done, the average municipal waste in Lagos municipality is 60-70% plastic material. The biodegradables in it is only about 10 to 20% from the data of our studies here at the University of Lagos. So at the end of the day, we find that what ends up in the water bodies is essentially plastic. And these plastics get into the rivers, from the rivers into the oceans. That has now become a global issue that UNEP, the United Nations Environment Program, has now established special programs for marine litter and plastics. The focus of that special program is how can we reduce marine litter, how can we reduce plastics going into our oceans. 